Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going, can you tell I'm really, really excited? <laughs> Today's video is going to be a little different. I'm going to be making a whole meal rather than just making one item, which I normally do. I'm going to make an entire meal. Um, so this video is brought to you in partnership with Jumia Fresh. <laughs> Jumia Fresh is part of the Jumia Food app or you can find Jumia Fresh on the Jumia Food website. So all that you have to do if you have the app or if you are on the website is type Jumia Fresh in the same way that you'd be checking for restaurants. Um, type Jumia Fresh and two options will come up. You can order your groceries which will be brought directly to your house. So they're things that you don't have to think about anymore. And like I said, this channel is all about ease. Like let's make things easily. Let's use easy methods. Let's also just deliver food to our house so you don't have to get out of the house to go and buy your groceries. Jumia Fresh is cool. So, <laughs> um, this video, yes, like I said, this video is brought to you by them. I will let you know what we are making after the intro. So, today we are making a delicious delicious meal we are making pork chops and cauliflower mash so there is where our have your cake and eat it thing comes cauliflower mash is a dupe of mashed potatoes um, i'll show you how to make it's delicious so we are making pork chops cauliflower mash and a side that i'm going to figure out so all the stuff that i'm using in the video today came from jumia fresh uh, including i could only actually bring out one bag because i got a lot of stuff so pork chops pork chops um there's some butter in there that i'm going to use for the cauliflower mash to be honest i've already taken out the cauliflower and separated it into florets we're going to have some mushrooms in there and just a whole lot of stuff just know there's going to be a whole lot of stuff the first thing that we are going to make like i mentioned was the cauliflower mash it's basically just mashed up cauliflower that's supposed to mimic mashed potato and to be honest if you do it right you can almost fool somebody but i'll show you a way where you can foolproof foolproof fool people Foolproof, fool people. That's cool. Okay, so all you need is a head of cauliflower. I have already cut this up and washed it. Um, you know that I love cauliflower. Yeah, I do. A little bit of butter. Now, for the people who are saying like there's a lot of fat in there, etc., etc., there is, but also we are cutting out potatoes. So really, a little butter never hurt anybody, right? <laughs> and my trusty blender. We're gonna blend this. There's someone in the comments who actually once said, "What is Maureen Kunga without a blender?" nothing without a blender so we are going to steam up the cauliflower um, cook it for a pretty long time my water is actually over here already boiling getting ready to steam my cauliflower and then um, when it heats up and comes to a boil I'm just gonna throw my cauliflower in and show you what happens next so this pan is actually not completely full of water it's only about halfway so I'm going to just throw in my cauliflower most people season this water and I would have seasoned it as well, but when I'm putting in all the other stuff that goes into making it seem like a mashed potato, it'll be, it'll be seasoned. So this is okay. <laughs> you can leave it as is. So I'm just going to throw this in there, cover it up, um, let the bottom boil and the top steam for about eight to 10 minutes. You want it very, very, very soft. So that'll take about 10 minutes while my cauliflower because this is going to take 10 minutes so while my cauliflower um, is steaming up i am going to move on to my loin chops so these are some delicious delicious pork chops i've trimmed off some of the fat because i didn't want all the fat that is optional you can leave all the fat in there if you want so this here is a other than the plane flying above me <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm just actually gonna wait okay so so this is a herb mix right so there's some oregano some rosemary um salt and pepper and paprika in here so i'm just going to use this to um season the pork chops and then i'm just going to rub that in make sure you rub it in after we've so now i have seasoned up my pork chops this is what they are looking like and I need to go back to my cauliflower. So I'm going to let these sit <laughs> for just a bit and then I will be right back. So these have been steaming, stroke, boiling. 
um, for just about 10 minutes. You want them super, super, super soft. Like a knife goes right through without trying at all. So then we're going to now um, um, drain these out. I'm going to save the water, but I'm going to drain them out and I'm going to show you how to make them now into a smooth pureed mash that mimics mashed potato. So you want these steaming, almost piping, piping hot. I have poured out the water into a container and now I'm just going to put these into a colander so that they can continue to drain. You can get, and that's actually what I'm going to do, you can get some serviette or um, um, what's it called, kitchen towel or even a really clean um, kitchen cloth, the, the dish cloth, and just sort of pat and dry. So we're trying to get it as dry, as dry, dry, dry as possible so that when we put it into the blender, which we're about to do next, it's like a super smooth, we're trying to like make a paste and cauliflower has so much water in it that it'll get too watery. So we're trying to suck out all the water we possibly can. So now we have dried out our cauliflower completely. What we want to do is put it in my trusty blender. You still want to do it while it's still hot. You want it steaming. Please keep that in mind. Um, and then now, like I had mentioned, you can season things as you go along. You don't have to necessarily season them, um, season while you're boiling. So we now put in seasoning, salt, pepper, nothing too serious. And then we're blending. So we're forming a puree mix. You're going to blend for a long time, but make sure it's still warm. Um, yeah, so let us begin. So, so every once in a while, you want to keep, keep blending, but keep scraping down the sides um, of this so that it spreads out and purees as a whole. We don't want it um, sticking and having like certain chunks of cauliflower and then chunks of um, 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 mash. You don't, want it, you don't want chunks of cauliflower showing up in your mash. You want it nice and smooth all the way around. So I'm going to do that. Now, one thing I'm going to add particularly for taste is a tablespoon of butter. So this is room temperature butter. It's nice and soft. Um, it will continue to melt in the cauliflower because the cauliflower is warm. So keep that in mind. That's another reason why you want the cauliflower to remain warm. So we just continue to puree this and then I'll show you the one last trick um, to just take this thing over the edge. So after your cauliflower puree has been made, once you've finished like going around and round and round and scooping it every once in a while, this was the spoon that used the butter, that um, put in the butter, you have a soft um, puree of cauliflower. Now, do not let anybody, including myself, tell you a lie. It tastes of cauliflower. It will taste of ca cauliflower. So what I have sort of developed is like a secret. It's a tip, pro tip. And you know, I like to give you like these pro tips. So the pro tip um, to, to making this um, cauliflower mash more potatoey is to add a potato. I know that, you're, that that's sort of like cheating right um you don't have to do that this is perfectly good as is it can be eaten exactly as it is but if you want like me sometimes to just still have that proper potato starchy feel then um you just add a little bit of potato some people add cream cheese um some people add just cheese um to it to make it taste a little less cauliflowery um, I just honestly add a potato because then it sort of fools the mind. Just know it is perfect exactly as it is, as long as it's creamy and it's soft. Serve it with um, the pork chops that I'm about to show you, um, how to finish up. Serve it with whatever. It'll still be delicious. But I'm just going to do the little trick or tip of adding a potato. What this does um, is that it makes it now taste a lot more like potato, but also... Um, this makes this a very nice alternative where you don't want to eat a full portion of potatoes. In this case, I'm only adding um, about half a potato, which well, that really means that I'm reducing my potato intake or my starch intake by about like 70%. So truly, some people do half and half, so half of the serving of potatoes and you fill the other half with cauliflower. Um, some people just do the cauliflower altogether, whichever you prefer. So this is just half of a boiled potato. I'm going to add it into my cauliflower mix. Now from here, you can actually mix it if you had wanted to take it out and mix it and pound it like you would normal mashed potato. That's fine. But since I'm already using the blender, I'm just going to continue to use the blender. So you throw in the potato, mix it down until it's at the bottom and then blend again. And we will be done immediately. It's um, blended through and smooth. 
So we now have a wonderful warm mix of um, potato and cauliflower mash, which now I'm just going to serve up and then get ready to go and make the rest of my pork chops. So it makes a very smooth mashed potato. I will show you, in fact, let me just finish serving this up, then I'll show you what it looks like. So here you have your delicious cauliflower mashed potatoes. You can see the specks of black pepper. Um, there's some salt in there. It's yummy. There's butter in there. There's half a potato in there. And now just for garnishing, I learned this online. So I was, um, I've never used chives before Jumia Fresh, to be honest. I had never used chives before. I always saw Gordon Ramsay putting chives on top of um, his scrambled eggs and his mashed potatoes. So I figured now that I found chives on the app, why don't I just use some chives? as my garnish for my potato. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to chop, chop these up and then I'm going to sprinkle them right on top of the potato. It is not potato, right on top of the cauliflower. I'm just going to chop these up and um, <laughs> sprinkle them right on top of the cauliflower. <laughs> and here we go. So these are my chopped up chives. Just sprinkle right over the top of your mash. And there you go, mashed cauliflower that I'm going to now put aside and quickly quickly um, do up my pork chops and then we can serve these together. And now to the meat of the matter. Haha, <laughs> get it? But Okay, so to the pork, <laughs> to the meat of the matter, um, we are going to fry these, pan fry these. You can also make them um, in your oven, but I'm just going to show you a really quick, easy way to pan fry them. I have talked about Gordon Ramsay before, so I'm just going to mention him again. I'm just going to um, pan fry it in olive oil. I'm going to add just a little bit of butter, some rosemary and some thyme, um, and that's it. It's already been seasoned. Remember, we had rubbed it with the salt and the pepper and the cayenne. Was it cayenne or paprika? And some oregano. So now the pan is heating up. I'm just going to add some oil. As soon as the oil starts to smoke up, I'm going to add the pork chops. Now I'm going to do them two at a time. As soon as the pan is smoking, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's smoking up now. I'm going to take these. Like I said, I'm going to make two at a time. So I'm just going to place it right there and right there and then we're going to wait i'm going to cook about um four to five minutes on each side uh and then i'm going to turn them over to their side so that the fat can also the little fat that remains um can also be be cooked through there's a word for it that i can't remember right now if i remember it i'm going to add it post-production but yeah that's it that's it it's very very easy and then i'm going to show you when to add the butter and your herbs so I like to make my pork, um, my pork chops a lot like I make my steaks, which is just put them on one side and leave them be for a pretty long time until you're turning them over. So now it's time to turn them um, around. So I'm just going to flip and flip and I'll show you the beautiful brown. Look at that. So pretty. Now at this point, because I'm just waiting for the other side um, to cook so that the pork itself can cook through, uh, I want to add my butter. I'm not even going to add all this. Less than this for sure. Maybe this is like half a teaspoon actually of butter. We're just trying to use very little. I'm just going to take it around the pan. Those pork chops were not supposed to move, but they did. And I'm just going to throw in some sprigs of thyme. This I also learned completely from Gordon Ramsay. This is what he does, and I thought it was cool, so I started doing it also, where he throws in um, the herbs. I'm sure very many people do it, but I learned it from Gordon Ramsay. So the herbs as well, honestly, I got on the app. Like I said, everything that I've used today um, came from the app. And the chives that I'm going to use, or I have used on the potatoes, as well as um, these are things that I normally never buy fresh, but they were like 20, 25 bob um, on the app, so I don't see why not. And about 10 minutes later, this is what we are looking like. They are beautiful, they are glossy, they smell delicious, it's ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn the heat off and take these out. Oh, something to note. I made sure that I picked them up with a fork and rendered the fat, the word is rendered, I have remembered. Rendered the fat on the sides, if that makes any sense. Just so that you don't have raw bits on the side. Um, while the rest of your pork chop is nice and cooked. So you just want to render that. Make sure that you make sure, make sure that all um, of your pork chop is 
cooked through. And then I'm just going to take them off. Ooh, there we go. Look at that, please. Yes, please. Yum. So there you go. Nice and golden brown. Of course, you can keep going. If you want them um, any hotter, keep going. So all I'm going to do is use all the fat and everything else in this pan to fry up for three minutes some mushrooms and that is it. Now in the same pan, in the same pan where the olive oil um, and the butter and the pork was, I'm just going to take out the herbs that have now sort of charred. I will not add anything else to the pan, but I had chopped up some mushrooms that I also got on the app. I'm just going to add those to the pot and mix them up. Of course, they'll start to cook down and they'll become a nice like vegetable side. I'm just going to add salt and pepper. Very, very simple. Uh, nothing special, just fried up mushrooms. My mushrooms are done. They are sizzling. Let me turn them off. Aha. Uh -huh. So there you go. This was very easy. I didn't do anything else. I just added, other than the butter that was already in there and the olive oil that was already in there, um, which was infused with the thyme um, and the rosemary. Now it sounds like a lot, but you know what I mean. Um, all I did was add some salt and some pepper and that is about it. So now it's time for service, right? Again, I don't do these things too well, but let me just use a little spoon and serve this up. So our mash. And now as I serve it, you can see the chives and the little green um, that's in there. Someone needs to teach me like food presentation and stuff like that. Look at that. I'm just going to eat this mushroom. So there you go. The first meal I've ever made on this channel. Your cauliflower mash that has just half a potato in there. <laughs> our pork loin chops and our mushrooms. Remember you can use any vegetables there just to color it up. All these things were bought off of Jumia Fresh. I'm, uh, the only thing I didn't buy off of the app was um, my salt and my pepper and, and, and my stuff. Which they actually do have but I had those things in the house so... I didn't see the point. So here is a yummy version. Please try especially the cauliflower mash because maybe that's new to some of you. It's really delicious, but you do need to add some stuff in there so that it doesn't taste um, of cauliflower. My thanks to Jumia Fresh for partnering with me on this video. You are what you eat, so please eat well and join me in the future so that I can continue to show you how to have your cake and eat it.